In this video, what we're doing is we're having a look at the very basics of RStudio. Uh, a lot of people start using RStudio as soon as they start using R. People will download it straight away and start using it. And if you're really not familiar with what's going on, RStudio can be a pretty intimidating environment to try and work in. This is what you will see if you just download the basic RStudio distribution. Um, there's a whole bunch of different panes in this window. There's lots and lots of tabs in some of these panes. Um, and there are lots of little buttons that do things like create a project there, um, delete files or folders, um, clear objects from the workspace and so on. So if you just look at our studio like this, it can be quite an intimidating thing to see. But if you know what you're doing with R, then RStudio makes a lot of sense and the way that it's built makes a lot of sense. So let's look at the kind of thing that you might have if you're running something in base R rather than running it in RStudio. So here's, here's some stuff going on in base R. Um, this is the Mac version. Obviously, if you've got a PC version, it's gonna look a bit different, but it's gonna be fundamentally the same. So we've got a console window here. The console window is where you actually put code into R and where that code is interpreted. Um, you'll sometimes get output from the console from the console into the console. So if you're doing statistical analysis, for example, um, and sometimes things that you do in the console window will produce other outputs, such as graphs like this one here, or help files like this one here. So we've got a console window, we've got a graphics window, we've got a window with our help file in, and then we've got a script window here, um, the script window is where we write our code and we then send it over to the console window by pressing Command Enter, if it's a Mac, um, and it will then run the code for you. So that's all very familiar, hopefully to you. Um, and just the way I've arranged these windows might give you a bit of a clue about how our studio works with those various panes that are present in our studio. So if we go back to our studio, what you can see is that we've got a console here. And this console in this pane is exactly the same as the R console. You can put, you can write code into the R console or you can send code there from the script window and the R console will then interpret that code and do stuff for you. So we've got a console window. We've got, in this pane here, we've got a tab that's labeled plots. It currently doesn't have any plots because we've not drawn any. And we've got a tab that's labeled help. So you can find help files and visualize them there. And then in this pane here, we've got some things that you don't really often, that you don't really see very much with base R. We've got environment, history, and then a few others. What we don't currently have is a script window, and that's because we haven't opened one. So if we just go to file, new file, there's a whole bunch of options, but the one we want is an R script window. And that will open a script window, which is the same as the, the script window that we used in our base R. Um, you can edit code in there. You can send it to your console. Um, this script window comes with a much more sophisticated editor than does the, the built-in script editor on either a Mac or a PC. And there are lots of things you can do that will make your life a great deal easier if you're working in the script window rather than working in the base R script editor. So let's go back to our, our base R installation here. We're just gonna copy and paste that code out of the script window into our script window here. So now we've got code in our script window here. And if we want to just run all of that code, we've got a bunch of options. We can just click on this button here that says run, run the current line or selection. This button here, rerun the previous code region. This button here will send the whole lot to the console window. Or we can just select it all by pressing Command A and then press Command Enter and it will run in the console window and we get our plot in the plot window. So RStudio is working in much the same way as BaseR works, but, it, but the whole thing is built to make it easier for you to do your R work. Um, and there are lots of things here that you don't get with base R. We probably just want to customize this a little. As I said, this is 
what our studio looks like as you download it. Um, there are lots of customization options and we can access them through the global options menu. The first thing I would recommend is that you click on the soft wrap our source files option here in the code tab of your global options window. That means that if you've got a long line of code, it will wrap within that script window rather than you having to scroll across to see it. In the appearance window, you can change things like the background colors, you can change the font, you can change the font size, and there's a whole bunch of different options for the, um, for the, for the syntax highlighting in the editor there. Um, we're not gonna worry about that today, but you can change all of those if you wish to. So if you wanted to, for example, you could change your um, change your script editor so that it looks like that. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go back to what we had before, which was, I think, tomorrow, the default one. Um, what we are going to do, though, is we're going to change the layout of the panes. The default option is to have the script window here and the console here and then the two other panes over here. Personally, I am strongly of the opinion that the script goes on the left and the console goes on the right. So we're gonna put the console up here and the environment and history windows will automatically go where the console window was. There are, I know, some people who think that the console goes on the left and the script goes on the right, um, but they are wrong and in need of re-education. Okay, so we're just gonna change the layout of our studio by doing that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through what some of these other tabs do and how we can use them. And since it's open, we might as well start with the environment tab, which is down here now. Um, the environment tab shows you what's present in your R workspace. So if you're used to working in base R, then you're used to doing something like that to give you a list of everything that's in your R workspace in the console window. In our studio, you can just look at it in the environment window here. And in addition to telling you the name, it tells you things about what's going on. So for example, we have our data frame data one, which is 100 observations of two variables. We have p1, which is of course our ggplot2 object, um, which has a list of nine things in it. And then we have a bunch of variables that we that we made when we ran this script earlier. One thing you can do with the environment window is you can actually visualize some of these things as well. So you can look at them. So if you click on data one, for example, it will open a new tab in this pane here and you can look at the data as they are. Uh, you can sort them, um, but you can't do much else. You can't really edit them or anything like that, but you can certainly look at them. And if you want to find particular entries, you can do that. So that's a useful thing for having a look at your data. Um, otherwise, you would just have to type something like that in your console and you get the same thing, but it's not as easy to run through. And you can do the same with P1 and that gives you uh, a list of all the different things that make up that ggplot object. And you can also look at those in a bit more detail as well. So you can visualize things that are present in your workspace from the environment tab. Um, you can't really edit them by bringing them up here. So this looks a bit like a spreadsheet, but it's not. So don't, don't think that you've got spreadsheet type data editing capabilities in our studio. It's not really there, um, but nonetheless, it is useful. The other thing to notice about the environment tab is that we have this, which says import data set and it gives you a whole bunch of options. So you can use the base R text importing functions, things like read CSV and read text. Um, you can use the reader package, which gives you a rather more sophisticated way of importing a whole bunch of different text files. And then it gives you options for importing data files from other um, data analysis packages, if you can call Excel a data analysis package. Um, be careful trying to use these. Um, if you are not familiar with the way that you need to format data to import it into R, and you're not familiar with how these functions work in base R, you can make quite a mess of things. So 
Don't just think that you don't need to learn about how to format data for R and import it. You do. Once you do that, then it's nice and easy to import them using these options. Um, but if you don't understand that, as I say, you can make a mess, and I've seen people make quite a mess. Um, we also have a little broom here. If we click that, it will clear the workspace for us, so we're not going to do that right now. So that's the Environment tab. We also have a tab labelled History. Um, this is really useful and doesn't get used as often as it probably should. Um, the History tab shows you all of the commands that are run through the console in the particular session that you're working in. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to draw our data in base R graphics rather than in ggplot, so we might type something like this. And we might want to give it a color. And steel blue is kind of the, um, the option that you have to use. And we're going to say we want a particular, we want a particular um, plot symbol. So we can run that code in the console. And we get our plot. And you can see it's now appeared in the history window. If we were to want that code in our script, rather than, you know, copying and pasting it out of the console window um, and then having to delete all those little arrows, which is okay if you've only got one line, but it's a pain if you've got 20 lines. You can just click on it here and then we have to source and it just sends it straight into the source window. Um, you can also rerun a particular line of code by clicking on that, which sends it to the console instead of sending it to the script window. If you want to use keyboard shortcuts, this is shift enter. I think I thought it was shift enter. Yes, it's shift enter. It was just hidden at the bottom there. And to send it to the console window is just enter. And that will then run it again. And we've plotted exactly the same graph as we had before. So this is the history window, which is really useful and rather underused. We're not going to worry about the connections window we're not going to worry about the tutorial window, although if you're using tutorials that people have written in the learner package, they're going to appear here. Um, but we're not going to worry about those for the moment. OK, so we'll just get back to the environment there. Moving over here, um, we've got a window, we've got a tab in this pane labeled files. And this actually has a little uh, file browser in it, so you can navigate your way through your file system here, you can find a particular file and you can open it in our studio by double clicking on it if you want to. And you can even make new folders, you can delete things, you can change the names of things, um, you can set working directories and all sorts of things from this files tab. The plots tab, we've already seen. One thing the plots tab does that base R doesn't do is you can go back and you can look at the previous plot or you can go forward and bring up your more recent plot. So that's really useful when you're trying to visualize your data. Um, you can click on that and it brings up a larger version of the plot for you. There we go. And if you click on that, it gives you a bunch of options for exporting your plot as a file. Um, this can be a little tricky. Um, sometimes, well, quite often it will come out with the axis labels, uh, not the size you want them to be, but with a little bit of work, you can make that work. Um, and then you've got some options here for, for getting rid. Let me just get rid of that. You've got some options here for remove the current plot or remove all the plots as well. So that's very useful. Next up, we have the packages tab, and this has a list of all the packages that are available and it tells you which ones are currently loaded into R. Um, you can install new packages with a point and clicky interface here. You can update existing packages and there's a little search window there. So if you know that there's a particular package in there, you can find it very easily with the search window. So that's also really useful. That gives you a way of managing your R packages that you wouldn't otherwise be able to use. Then we've got the help tab which does what it says on the tin this is where you find um, help files for r so we've currently got the geom smooth one from ggplot2 
um, if we wanted to go back to base graphics and we really don't know what we're doing we might just bring up the help files for plot um, which wasn't a very good choice because there's lots of different options let's choose something else um, let's say we want to fit a linear model we can find the help file for the LM function for fitting linear models and then last of all we have the viewer window I don't think we need to worry too much about that for the moment but what I will say is that if you ever find yourself doing something like rendering markdown files they're going to appear in the viewer window so all of these or well, most of these are going to be immediately useful some of these might only be useful in the future going up to this pane here we've got the console window and then we've got some things that you really probably don't need to worry about for the moment. The terminal window actually gives you a terminal for your, um, in this case, for MacOS. Um, and the jobs thing is for when you're running lots of different things at the same time. And we're not going to worry about that. So that's what all of these different panes do in our studio. Uh, last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some more options for customizing things and look at some of these buttons up here. Um, if you're running our studio on something like a laptop with a small screen, um, quite often it gets quite difficult to see what's going on. Um, our studio has lots of options for moving things around in the window and making it easy to see what's going on. So first of all, all of these panes have got these two icons here. So you can minimize one of these panes by clicking on that. You can bring it back to where it was by clicking there again and you can maximize it by clicking on that. So if you want to get some more screen for a particular pane, it's quite easy to do. Let's say you're working in a script window and you want to see the whole script, you can just click on that and there you go. That's very useful. You can change the width of them by just clicking and dragging on that bar that goes up and down there. And you can change the height of them by clicking and dragging on that bar that goes up and down there. There are some more tricks as well. So if you have a script window, you can click on this button here, which says show in new window. Script windows are the only ones that do this, but it's really useful. And that will actually make a new window that you can edit your script in, which is really handy. Um, and if you've got something like a dual monitor set up, you can now put a script on one window and the rest of our studio on the other window and all sorts of funky things like that. And if you're running in a laptop, you can make that nice and big, and then you can switch between the two, depending on what it is that you want to look at at the time. And then you can click that again, and it'll go back to our studio. So opening your script in a separate window is a, is a really useful way um, to edit things and makes life a lot easier, particularly for those of you with small screens. Last of all, if we click on this, um, this little button here, then we have a bunch of zoom options. So you can do that and that will zoom just the console window um, or you can zoom just the plot window if you want to have a good look at your plot um, and you can go back to show all panes. You can also use keyboard shortcuts for this. So they're written there for a PC, they'll be slightly different, um, but it's control shift and then a number so to zoom the source pane again, it's going to be that. There we go. And to go back to all of them, it's Control Shift Zero. So there we go. Um, and again, that's really useful to know if you're working in um, in something with a, with a with a very small screen. I think that's enough for this video. In the next video, we'll talk about how you can save your work as a project in our studio and why that's really useful as opposed to just saving data files and scripts. Thank you.